Hello fellow planters. So I'm going to show you guys five plant ideas that you can utilize to sell at local flea markets, farmers markets, or even just gift ideas for people. And um, one of the things so many people need that they don't think about when it comes to plants are padding it. So when you set it down on like if you have it on a bookshelf or something, you don't want the ceramic from the pot to keep scuffing up the surface of the bookshelf. And you've seen in many of my videos how I take pieces of self-adhesive craft foam, you can buy them for like a dollar a sheet, and using a hole punch I get so many little tabs that I can punch then I can peel and stick to the bottom. And I can put as many as I need depending on the size of the container. So here I have them and I labeled it. And I also wrote down the quantity, 150. I'm not sure what I would charge for this yet. Probably a couple bucks or so, maybe two or three. I guess three would be on the high end. And I recently ordered some hole punches with larger diameter holes to accommodate uh, bigger pots and things as well. But you don't just stop at those little peel and stick tabs. You can also get four by four tiles from like a, um, Lowe's, Home Depot, Floor and Decor. I got this from Floor and Decor. You put the self-adhesive craft foam underneath and then you can put the plant on there. And you can get uh, larger tiles if you have bigger pots. And um, it just looks decorative with the marble. It makes it look more chic and elegant. And these actually, the 4x4 ones actually go good as coasters, you know, just to put your mug on when you're just sitting and chilling in front of the TV or computer. And if you're uh, into crocheting or something, you know, you could also make little doilies that are designed to the standard different pot sizes to go underneath. So this is the first thing that you could do. Now, the second thing you could do is actually have plants potted in cool ways. For example, here I have a Stonehenge mug. You see, it's a Stonehenge, and this is from the 80s. So what did I plant in there? A lithops plant, and this is the one of the original one. It um, a few months ago broke off into two, and now I have two little plantlets. And this one I don't really want to sell. It's one I planted directly into the mug. And you can actually find really cool vintage mugs and find plants that seem to match the theme of the mug. For example, if you... Um, find one like this one that says peace in so many different languages, you can plant a peace lily in there. And then you can learn it in so many different languages. So if you want to sell it, you can impress people with your pronunciation in all the different languages. Oh, just a side note here, you know, in Hebrew, you have shalom. But instead of the O sound, which is with that vowel there, in ancient Phoenician, it was pronounced Shalem, so that's the Phoenician pronunciation versus Shalom versus where is it in Arabic where it would say Salam? Let's see. It's hard looking at this through the camera trying to find it, but anyway. Um, so, so that is just a little side note. But here's another cool thing you could do with the plants as well. You could actually get different uh, types of pot, uh, mugs and instead of planting directly into them like with this lithops plant, you plant them into, this is a Siggy's yogurt container and they fit perfectly so then you can sell a mug with a plant and people get to choose which plant goes with which mug. And I planted it with a little bit of um, perlite underneath just to as act as a reservoir to collect excess water just because this peperomia peppermill, you know, you, they can't sit in water, and I do need to water this, but this way if I accidentally put a little more than intended, I don't worry about killing this plant, and it's been happy in here. So I have it in this bug, and this one's not for sale, because I have the dark brown, and this mug's made in Japan. I really don't uh, know what label that is. You see how in this mug, I actually cut these into hemisphere hemispheres versus full circles to go along the rim. So that's just a simple touch you can do as well, going back to the first item. So here I have it sitting in there and made them where they're swappable. 
Concurrently, you can set up a hydroponics setup. So, for example, when you look at the Siggy's yogurt containers, <clears throat> excuse me, this one, um, it harbored yogurt made with non-fat milk. I mean, who wants fat? Yuck. And then they make the ones that have whole milk thinner tubs. So you can fit it inside there and you can see where the seam is. So you can actually make a, like cut a couple holes and run a wick and make a small hydroponics setup. But if you do put them in a mug, you may have to put a little border here just to make it look pretty. But concurrently, you could do a hydroponics setup where you take the container in here, you punch a couple holes, and then the mug itself acts as a reservoir for the water. Now, in line with the hyper, hy, uh, hydroponics, I can't even speak anymore, can I? In line with the hydroponics, you could actually get bulb vases and small glass vases. Like this is a bulb vase where I planted a Nepenthes. I believe this is a Nepenthes alata. I bought this. It was literally that tiny and six bucks. I didn't bother pruning it yet, just so I can show people how the original plant was so small. You can see how tiny the pictures were. And now as it's growing, you have bigger ones. Here's the latest picture to develop. And it's nice because it automatically fills up with water on its own from the plant versus having to wait for um, it to rain inside the house. But um, I have this on a west facing window and you can see the roots have gone all the way down to the reservoir. I do need to fabricate something bigger for this. So as you can see, hydroponic setups are excellent and people would just enjoy that. It would be something they're like, wow, I know when I need to water because it's running dry in these see-through containers. And if you saw a video I posted a couple weeks ago, where I bought a Venus flytrap and put it in a small bulb vase. And when you buy them from big box stores, you have so many different varieties because they're not selling a particular cultivar. And these are typically the wild form, you know, when you grow them from seeds and then start propagating, you have different varieties. So they'll probably propagate from either seeds or leaf pullings, depending on the nursery. So you have so many different varieties. And this one, I like the shade of red. It's like a brighter color than the Aku Ray kind or Red Dragon ones. And it's only on the leaf and the stem is virtually green. I kind of call this variety the carrot top. I'm hoping I'll be able to propagate this. Now the ones I did propagate uh, more, most recently are still too tiny, but I have this one in a similar vase to the other one and I actually put a tag on here. The string fortunately wrapped around and this way you can write it with the care requirements and people are like, cool, all they have to do is just pour distilled water. Then here is a different uh, vase and these two I bought from Lowe's, and unfortunately Lowe's recently raised the price on their Venus flytraps. So now if you look at it, it's $4.98. But when you look at it, they have like, here's one variety with tiny um, traps. It could also be a younger one. Now if you look at this one, it has like a sawtooth, large traps, but also if you can see it in there, I haven't, um, it has like a sawtooth, almost like the denti variety. So you, you do want to cherry pick, find the healthy ones and see if you find ones with larger traps. Look at that beautiful sawtooth in there because people will like the larger traps more when you want to sell. And then this one, traps are okay and everything, but um, that's something you want to do if you buy Venus fly traps, if you don't have time to propagate your own or you want to sell some, but you don't actually have any that are ready to sell. You can just buy them from stores or even the nursery that you, some nurseries will sell you like a pallet of a hundred small ones for like two bucks a piece or something. So you could do stuff like that, but you have different styles of these small bulb vases. So this is the first one that I found. And then this one, and I got these first three from Michael's. Whoops. I'm going to set them like this. And then I found this kind of Dollar Tree, which is taller, and the top isn't perfectly symmetrical. But what I want to do is have you guys, if you feel like it, I hope you do, pause the video and leave a comment as opposed to number one, 
two, three, or four, which one you think looks the best. And before you do, I do want to give you a few comments about them to give you my insight in case it can help you also determine and you can decide which, which of these factors you think are the most important for your personal needs if you were to grow a Venus flytrap. This one, I like the aesthetics, the fact that the neck constricts a little more than this one because I was able to tie the tag and string on there. And, you know, it's nice and short, but it's a little wider, so it takes a little more real estate. This one, I think, looks the most elegant or fancy, but that's a little too wide. I can't wrap a tag around. Then this one, this piece is a little too small, so it's better for a, a juvenile Venus flytrap versus a larger one. So the ones I'm still waiting to become fully grown, I could plant in here and sell them for cheap. And then this one from the Dollar Tree, that one is a lot bigger, but it's... Uh, you can see how it's not perfectly symmetrical at the top and also it stands a lot taller which isn't necessarily a bad thing I like things sitting lower on the table like if you have flowers at a restaurant I hate how they're big and tall and in the way when you're sitting there but if you have oops if you have um, like some in these or that you can have like some in the background and you know and have different varieties of Venus flytraps all there on the same countertop near a window and the taller ones can be, you know, in the back of your field of view and then, you know, shorter ones like that. And it will give you a nice, pleasant uh, look. So anyway, these are my two th cents. So if you can just pause this momentarily and let me know if you prefer which vase you like the most. One, two, three, and four. And also why and why those are the contributing factors. So now that we've continued with the, um, you know, we talked about different hydroponic ways to plant these things to where people will enjoy them. I'm trying to find counter space here for these. Um, another thing you can do are simple terrariums. So recollect last year I set up this, um, it's basically a flower aquarium, a nice old vintage one. And I had a few plants in there. This one survived. It's a strawberry begonia, which isn't a true begonia, but they spread nicely. And I was thinking about putting this in the yard and letting it spread, but, you know, I just watered it because it starts to wilt. You can see it's wilted, but then it perks up and looks really nice in there as just a nice plant without other ones cluttering that look. And what's nice is I'm, oops, I'm able to open this and squirt water here and just let it soak. So I haven't fully sealed this to let the soil dry. It's gonna take a while to soak up because it's really dry, but the roots made the soil into a nice patty. So I recently was able to, recently as in earlier today, remove the whole globe off and clean the inside because I had pieces of dead plant stuff. This one fell from somewhere, but I'm not gonna worry about it. It's not stuck to the glass other than just by surface tension of a water droplet. So terrariums are another thing you can make that you can sell or give as gifts. Now recollect that when I made that flower aquarium, I saved this in the bag. So if I do sell it, I have this to go along with it. So you don't want to throw away pieces you don't use just in case the person who gets them will enjoy them. So the fifth and final thing, you know, we discussed just a recap. Plant paddings, having plants in mugs as a creative way, um, hydroponic stuff, and with the hydroponics also, you can basically sell them as kits where you take the ring that you make to the right length and the cordage and just let someone plant their own plants. So this could be a simple thing you can do as well. And then we talked about the terrariums if you want to make simple small terrariums and the fifth thing would be macrame which I recently got into and this is one of the earlier pieces I made and I designed you could have this hanging on like a banana hanger or, or whatnot but um, this one I think you know I priced it at ten dollars I don't know if that's too high or not but you can actually put sphagnum moss in here with a miniature orchid and then you can know when to water and make sure you haven't watered enough. So these um, small votive candle containers are great for that. 
And then, if you recollect, I made this also back in December, and I modeled this from a YouTube video I watched. And I had this where I bought one time a small Phalaenopsis orchid and it died. So this is a used pot, not something brand new, but it fit in here. So if I sell this, I'd have to sell it with the pot. And I priced this at 20. I don't know if it's too much or not, but you can price it just a little more because people will want to negotiate at these places. But also, like, you see macrame stuff for like $30 at Hobby Lobby, and then if they're on sale for 50% off, that's $15. So, and those are ones that are made standard as opposed to more intricate designs and custom ones that you make. And then also with planters, you can make simple wall mounted macrame hangers. And um, like this one here. So I bought this on sale for five bucks from Hobby Lobby. It was retailed at 10. And I also found this, I like this cool one because it looks like a little pitcher plant almost. And, um, you know, these are good simple ones that take about 30 minutes to make, as opposed to some that are more intricate and the larger hanger ones that are just hanging from the ceiling. And those basically are um, things you can make to sell at flea markets, farmers markets, or just to give as gifts, you know. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and happy planting.